Hey everybody, thanks for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be uh, doing an overview of the hardware for an industrial ethernet 3400 series switch from Cisco. This is a uh, fairly new industrial ethernet switch designed for rugged environments, designed for the extended enterprise. Uh, so we're gonna take this thing out of the box, look at what comes with it, talk about the different interfaces and components of it, where you might use it, and kind of go from there. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. With that being said, let's get this thing out of the box and take a look at it. All right, so I have everything unboxed and out of the packaging. There's a couple things that I want to point out. This is a different form factor than most switches. It is an industrial form factor. You can see it's a, really a heavy duty box, heavy aluminum case. That also is the convection cooling method for the system. There's no fans, no moving parts. Uh, it is DIN rail mountable, so you can see the DIN rail slot on the back there. You can see how that clips on. There's a release lever here for uh, attaching and, and unattaching it to a DIN rail, so mounting it in a cabinet, an industrial enclosure, something to that effect. Uh, it is a, again, very heavy duty unit from the, you know, just the initial physical look at it. There's a couple other things that came with my system as well. I have a power supply. Now this does not have a power supply built in, like again, a typical switch may because it's industrial. I have an industrial uh, Cisco power supply here. You can see it takes AC voltage on the bottom and then outputs DC voltage at the top. You would actually install this in a cabinet as well to then power this switch and get it online and running. The third thing that was in the box is this guy. Hopefully you can see that, that is a SD memory card. It's a four gig card. That is what stores the configuration on the switch. So the nice thing about that is if the switch were to fail, you can send you know, more of a, uh, a line level individual out to go ahead and swap this. They don't have to worry about knowing the configuration, how to copy a file off or get a backup copy to copy on. You simply pull the SD card out and pop it in the new device, wire it up, and you're good to go. So that's everything in the box. Let's look closer at the switch itself. As you can see, there are a number of different connectors on here. This is the eight port variety of this device. There's a handful of, of different options that are available from Cisco. Uh, so this is the eight port model. You see the eight ports down the middle, typical ethernet interfaces, uh, but there's a couple other things on here as well. So let's, uh, let's start over here. We have a USB uh, a or a pair of USB-A uh, connectors under this cover. They're for plugging in a USB, you know, a thumb drive or something like that if you need to load software or a configuration to the device. Uh, there's a typical console port. There is a USB console port right under it uh, for connecting uh, the more modern USB console cable to the device to do the initial configuration. There is a pair of uh, fiber SFP module slots here. So you can definitely put the, the fiber modules in there, single mode, multi-mode. There's rugged actual SFPs as well that take higher temperatures and those types of things that are always a good bet to go along with this guy. That SD card I mentioned, the slot is right here. There's a little screw. It flips down, the SD card pops right in like it would really any other SD card device, like digital camera and so forth. Uh, it'll just pop right in there. On the other side, you can see here there are two power terminals. Now, I have a single power supply that came with this. You can actually wire up two DC power sources using these terminals. This gives the device more resiliency. So if you lose power uh, or something to that effect, you're going to have uh, power on two terminals potentially that will uh, keep your industrial environment up and running, uh, again, in the event you have a power outage on one. There are some uh, small LED indicators here that indicate power for both uh, terminals. So something to be aware of from a front panel perspective. Finally, there is a, another terminal block here with a couple more connectors. This is for alarms. So you can actually wire up physical real world uh, alarms, either a, a bell or a light or something to that effect. That way, if you have an alarm state on the switch and interface is down or there's some thing has happened and there's you know a, a degradation in service you can actually have a light as part of the cabinet that lights uh and, and does something to alert the uh the physical world around it that this is in fact the uh the problem in the network i have another video on that that i'll put in the uh, video description that you definitely want to check out 
uh, if that's something that might be helpful to you. The last thing that I want to mention about the hardware here is this cover right here. Uh, now it doesn't look like much, but what that allows you to do is take this switch and expand it. You can get modules, add-on modules to increase the port capacity. Uh, so if you uh, have something like that, you know, you, you build out, you need eight ports initially, but you find that you need more in the future, you can actually expand these devices, whereas a lot of switches like this are a very fixed configuration. Even Cisco has some as well, but this is a modular device that allows you to expand and get more capacity as your network grows, as your automation needs grow, uh, or even your extended enterprise needs grow. You can uh, definitely take this guy and expand it as well. All right, so you may be wondering, where would you use a switch like this? Well, I mentioned the extended enterprise and the industrial environments uh, as we talk through that. An extended enterprise is needing some type of connectivity outside of the carpeted IT space, if you will, uh, and this is a great device for this. So for instance, if you have a surveillance camera or a wireless access point or some type of uh, you know, other equipment on the roof of the building, in the basement or wherever, and you have an industrial cabinet that that it's in, uh, this would be a great device for this. It can take higher high temperatures and much lower low temperatures. So again, if it's uninsulated and it's outside, this would definitely be the go-to device for connecting that whatever it is. Uh, boiler rooms, HVAC systems, those areas of the building, again, a, another great way to connect uh, with a switch like this in the extended enterprise uh, realm. From an industrial perspective, a switch like this is also going to offer you a lot of benefits. So if you're in an uh, you know, industrial, in a plant environment, the network might not be the typical uh, you know, hierarchical network model. It may be more of a ring or an odd shaped star topology, something like that. Those, these networks kind of grow uh, organically and get more sophisticated. But this device has additional protocols over and above what your typical enterprise feature sets have to accommodate rings and, and those types of resilient network topologies. Additionally, it supports Ethernet IP, Profinet, and a number of other industrial-centric protocols. Um, it you know, has some technology to work better with PLCs and, and, again, those type of devices, while still giving you that full catalyst feature set that you might be used to, again, on a catalyst platform. There are a number of different ways to interact with this switch from a software and management perspective. Cisco has the CyberVision product, which allows uh, you know, visibility into that industrial network. It sees industrial protocols and understands them and even goes deeper than just the IP header uh, layers. Additionally, uh, industrial network director still is going to work with this from a, a you know a basic inventory management perspective and, and you know, connectivity management perspective. Stealth watch flows can be gathered from a device like this, and DNA center can even work with a device like this. Probably more in the extended enterprise environment, but it gives you that same type of visibility and end-to-end -end control you would expect with a traditional catalyst switch. Anyway, hopefully that's been helpful. If you have questions, comments, tips, tricks. Uh, or really anything else about the industrial switching space, leave that in the video comments section below. I'll do my best to answer it. I have a number of resources in the video uh, description, so check that out. With that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful, and I hope to see you back sometime soon.